Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Seju and uh, Suk. Uh, so, we'll start with Suk. Um, you were obviously born in Spain um, and, uh, and, and grew up in, in uh, sorry, you were born in Korea, grew up in Spain, and uh, went to university in, in the States, um, and had a number of roles as a, an international director before you founded Drama Fever in, in 2008 and uh, launched the service in 2009. Um, I wonder if you could just uh, Tell us a bit about what Drama Fever is. Sure. So Drama Fever started, uh, you know, for the need to bring in Korean dramas to the U.S. It's as simple as that. Uh, you know, I traveled throughout all of Asia in my multiple roles and uh, noticed how prevalent and ubiquitous the uh, Korean dramas were in all major primetime broadcasters throughout Asia. You come to the U.S., it's very popular, everybody's watching it illegally online, downloading, and I, they're all over here, you guys, right? <laughs> so we made a business plan uh, to license legally uh, the content from Korea, bring it into the States, uh, and monetize it through advertising. Uh, we're now the largest aggregate distributor of Asian television content. Uh, we also have syndication deals with Hulu, uh, Netflix, and we're the first company to put subtitled foreign television content on iTunes for sale in North America. Uh, we have an exclusive deal with uh, Samsung Media Hub for redistribution. And uh, starting end of last year, uh, we started aggregating content from Latin America and Europe. Uh, when I say Europe, I mean primarily Spain. Uh, and uh, we're building upon both uh, our Asian uh, and Spanish language content. Uh, so, so why were Korean dramas so popular? Were, were you just focusing on the uh, Korean American community, or, or, or who are your, your viewers? So let's start with who are the viewers. Um, you know, we have four million uniques right now consuming about 20 million video uh, streams a month. Uh, last month, uh, and we monetized through advertising subscription, uh, and last month we had our first month that we reached a million dollars in, in revenue. Um, it turns out when we look at our analytics, 30% uh, of our audience is Latino, uh, followed by uh, Caucasian, and then evenly split uh, between African American and Asian. Uh, the Korean representation is actually very small, which is not surprising because there's only 1.7 million Koreans uh, in all of the US, according to the 2010 census. So uh, it's, it's a very uh, young, engaged, uh, diverse demo from the US uh, that is watching uh, this content. And uh, we'll move over to Seiju then. Uh, so Seiju was also born in, in Korea, uh, grew up in Korea, and uh, uh, moved to the US for, uh, for college, obviously. No, no? sorry. <laughs> no, uh, no. no, actually I dropped the school, so I didn't come to America for college, sorry. Okay. Uh, I wonder if you could tell us a bit about the, uh, how, how you founded Noom. Uh, how did you found Noom? Yes, yes. So um, I came to America for I wanted to do more business because I did my business first when I was 19 and uh, quite successful and came to America after I dropped the school to do more. I was super ambitious, still ambitious. I wanted to make a billion dollars. So I came to America. And then um, I was searching for a new opportunity. What's uh, the area that is not technology has not touched? And I figured like uh, wellness, fitness, hues, and uh, technology quite bad. That's why we found the company. And and what exactly is Noom? Oh yeah, oh uh, Noom. We are number one top gross application at the fitness market and Android right now. So. If you want to lose weight or your wife, your girlfriend, if you want to recommend them to lose weight, then try to download it. Uh, a lot of users, our users lose like 10 pounds in three months. Uh, that's average, so it's quite a uh, high result. So, you know, if your girlfriend, you're not happy, you cannot say it, just recommend our application. They will try it and they will lose weight, look better. Um, so we are, making top, um, we are making weight loss applications called Noom. Um, we are quite big at Android right now. We just launched iOS version. Uh, a big launch is coming, um, found by me and uh, ex-schoolers, a lot of smart people, not me, a lot of you know, good engineers. We are based in Manhattan. Okay, um, now obviously you're, you're both born in Korea. Um, I, I wonder, obviously this is a, a global conference, uh, what, what made you come to the States? Uh, why, why didn't you found your, your companies back where you were, where you were brought up? Uh, sure. I, um, 
uh, you know, like a lot of uh, immigrant uh, families uh, that uh, grew up outside of the U.S., it, you know, it was all about education, education, education. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, my parents uh, were like, oh, you have to, you know, go to the States to get an education. And um, uh, so I've been in the States for, you know, high school, college. I got my MBA from, uh, from New York. Um, but... Uh, you know, I think what, what's, what's very interesting about, uh, you know, why do we start the business uh, in the States is because, uh, you know, it's, it's, at least in my background, it was uh, where I was rooted, uh, you know, professionally and academically. Uh, but I think what precedes that is, you know, uh, maybe some of uh, the people in the audience here can relate, uh, being part of, uh, of the immigrant uh, family and seeing parents that are entrepreneurial, uh, that are hardworking, uh, and I think it was the combination of that and then being in the States and being faced with the opportunity to do something entrepreneurial uh, using a network that I developed here uh, that is, is the catalyst of those two things. Okay, you, you touched on something quite interesting there, your, your, your background. Um, now, uh, it's often said that, you know, Koreans are often are, are, are quite averse to, to failure. It's something we, we touched on last night. Um, is there anything from both of your backgrounds that you think um, helped you get over that, that fear of failure that, that has led to where you are today? Uh, Seiju, maybe you can start. Um, how did I overcome the fear of failure? I experienced a, a miserable failures over my second business. And um, um, when I came to America, because I had a huge uh, um, a dream that I wanted to achieve it, um, I dropped my school, so I kind of I kind of bridge abandoned my bridge that I, I don't have a place I can go back. Otherwise, I have to study again and then um, I'll take a uh, SAT and then apply to school. It quite sucks. Um, so I had to work hard. I had no choice. And um, it, uh, it's my personal story, but uh, my father was an entrepreneur, so he uh, he actually ran the hospital. He was a doctor. Uh, he was quite successful. And he passed away when I was 21, and that uh, gave me like the moment that, wow, this is really, really fucking, I'm sorry, the bottom line. I felt like, wow, I really, really set the bottom line. So I was like, uh, um, my business was very good at the moment. My first business, I made quite good money. And at the same time, my father passed away. I felt like um, uh, uh, quite, um, uh, that gave me like another, another second, like a soul searching moment. That's how I drove. Uh, m uh, myself to come to America to want to do a big from scratch reset and um, uh, do it well. So whenever I, I pitch to Americans, when I came to America with a little English and a no network, um, that was that was quite tough. But um, every day I was, I was learning. I was learning how I can do better. And uh, Angel came down. I can. Uh, I met a lot of good friends. I met a lot of helpers, and there are a lot of people wanting to help me out. So. Little by little, I was able to make the progress, and that progress actually hold me, hold me up. And every day when, when I wake up, I feel like, wow, there is a progress. And uh, Suk, what, what about yourself? What, what are your perceptions of, of uh, failure and how it plays into uh, the way entrepreneurs operate in Korea? And, and, and what suggestions would you make to, uh, to help to improve that? Sure. So, uh, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. When, uh, when we first started uh, developing Drama Fever, we had uh, a really beautiful PowerPoint presentation, and we went to KBS and SBS and NBC. We're like, look, we can make money for you in the U.S. And, and everyone was like, who are you? <laughs> you know, what's Drama Fever? Uh, Odi Apayo? Um, and um, it took me eight months to do the first licensing uh, deal. And uh, we built this company literally title by title by title, begging and pleading to get content. Um, and uh, three months ago, uh, when uh, President Park, Park Geun-hye came to um, uh, the States, uh, she made a stop in DC, she made a stop in LA, invited uh, 18 uh, people, mostly Korean Americans, uh, in business, entrepreneurship, venture capital, um, to make a recommendation to the Korean government about creative economy. So her campaign was based on the notion that uh, through entrepreneurship, intellectual property, uh, and venture capital, you can build more uh, jobs uh, and increase the economy of Korea, right? Uh, and they invited me to be part of, uh, of this panel, right? 
So the one thing that was discussed uh, over, and then there was a common thread amongst everybody there, was that Korea does not have a culture of failure. Uh, and you know, the, uh, Ben uh, mentioned this in the previous uh, session. It's, you know, you gotta lose the fear of, of failure. Uh, and it goes beyond just yourself, right? I mean, it's in the eyes of your parents, your friends, your colleagues. What happens if you fail and you're Korean? Right? So I think, um, you know, that is the first thing that needs to, you get, that you need to get over. And then institutional, uh, at the institutional level, the states is, is a great country where you know, they have strong bankruptcy laws and they protect uh, and encourage people to start 